Hi, my name is Steve James, and I'm the teacher and author of the class and book called How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. This is the More Abundant Life podcast, episode number 340, The Opening of the Class, Part 2. This podcast is a remixed, edited, and augmented from the original audio files. I originally taught the class every third Saturday of each month starting in January of 2005, a day in the Word each month until June, with a summer break finishing in September of 2005. Here is the opening of the class, part two. Well, moving on just a little bit further in this class, I think the next thing that I'd like to get into is the reverence and love for God. And I would like to start by going to, almost in the middle of your Bible, into Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. If you, if you got your Bible and you went almost towards the middle, you would find Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1 and in verse 7 I'm going to get there it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge wow in this class we want to get an understanding of the Bible we want to be able to understand the Bible right the word of God it says here the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge now when you see that word fear in the Bible there are two types of fear. One is being afraid, like you could see a snake or, some, or something dangerous, you, you would back up from that. The other fear is the respect for God, an awe, A-W-E, of God. The respect and love for God. And this is what this fear, this word fear means in this verse. The fear or the respect of the love of God is the beginning of knowledge pretty neat so in a class like this we're trying to understand the Bible here's the beginning of knowledge right here the fear or the respect or awe or love for God is the beginning of knowledge and the second part of the verse is but fools despise wisdom and instruction now we don't want to be the fools we want to have that love for God See, one, if you want to know God and you want to love God, if you want to, you see that? There's a desire to do it. That's the beginning of knowledge. Go to Proverbs chapter 9. We're in Proverbs. Go over to chapter 9 and we'll read verse 10. And it says here, the fear, once again, the respect, the love of God, right? The love for God is the beginning of wisdom. You want to have wisdom? It starts with that respect for God. We should have great respect for God. I mean, he created the heavens and the earth, right? He put everything in its place, the stars in its place. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. We should have that great respect for God. And it says it's the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. By understanding the scripture, man... We, it's holy to do that. It's a holy thing. Can you imagine understanding the holy? God is holy. Let's go back to Proverbs, to chapter 2, verse 1. I love this section because it just demonstrates, as you read these scriptures, of how close God is to us and what we need to do that beginning of knowledge that beginning of understanding of the scriptures and it says in verse 1 of chapter 2 my son if thou will receive my words the words of God right and hide my commandments with thee in other words you, you learn God's word you read God's word and you keep those words you keep them you hide them right that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding 
if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as hidden treasure, then, then, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Now I love these verses here, because you know what, if you want to know about God, it tells you how to do it here. Just look at these words. It says, Incline thy ear unto wisdom. I'm teaching God's word. Get your ears unto wisdom. Apply thy heart to understand. If thou criest after knowledge, sounds a little bit like prayer. God, I need some understanding. I need some knowledge. Can you help me, God? Whenever you go to God's word, when you're reading God's word and searching the scriptures, you should always say, God, teach me your word. A little prayer, God. God's always there with you anyhow. So say, God, I, would you give me some understanding? A little help, and God will give it. Because look, Christ, all, if lifted up thy voice for understanding, God, I need the understanding. Show me what I need to do in this situation. And then read God's word. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as hidden treasure, treasure that someone dug and put in a hole. See, in the lands and times of the Bibles, they didn't have banks. So if someone had a great treasure, one of the things they would do is bury it. And you know what? Something might happen so they'd forget about it, or some way or another, you'd be digging and you'd find some buried treasure. Wouldn't that be cool? It says, searches for her as hidden treasure. It says, then shalt thou understand the fear or the respect of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It says, then. Then meaning, then shall Puts it in the absolute. You will absolutely understand the respect of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. If you want to find it, you will find it. But it tells you what to do. This is applying thy ear. Apply thy ear, right? Apply thy heart to understanding. Criest after knowledge. Lift it up thy voice. God, help. Searches for her. Reads. Search those scriptures, right? Then, absolutely, you will know. Verse 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. It's in God's word. See, God's word really is our contact point with God. As we read the words of God, we get the thoughts of God, the understanding of God. And as we have opportunity, need, we're in situations in our life, we can pick up this wonderful word of God Read it. Ask God for help, and God will absolutely help. It's a promise in God. It's word he will absolutely do it. Let's go to chapter 3 of Proverbs, and we're going to go to verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. See, once you find it, man, you're blessed. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. It's better than that. Once you understand the scripture, you're blessed. You're, you're blessed as can be. You know, bet, it says better than the merchandise of silver and the gain of fine gold. Oh, verse 15 says, She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. To understand God's word is better than rubies. Man, and all that thou canst desire are not compared to her. Look at verse 16. It says, Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Remember I said all scripture is profitable? It is. It's profitable. It says here, length of days are in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Verse 17 says, her ways are ways of pleasantness. Man, wouldn't you like to live a pleasant life? That's what it says. And all her paths are peace. Man, 
That's a prophet. What do you want in life? Would you like to have pleasant times and live in peace? I would. And it's available in God's word. Verse 18 says, She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is every one that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understandeth he established the heavens. God made it all available, he put it all together, and then he put a book out, the Bible, the scriptures, so that we could understand and know. And this word of God is so vitally and very important to us. And it's very profitable to, to us. All scripture is profitable. Another thing that I see from the research of God's word, the research of the scripture, as we search the scriptures, is that God wants us to be able to break the bondages, to be set at liberty, to have the deliverance that God makes available. And this is all written in the scriptures as we search the scriptures to let the scriptures say what they say. And with this subject, let's go to Isaiah chapter 61. Now we're in Proverbs. We'll go through Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, heading towards the back of the Bible. And then we come across the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61. And we'll read some of God's word, some of the scripture in Isaiah 61, and we're going to start in verse 1, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. The Spirit of the Lord is to bring good tidings, to bind the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison to them that were bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the vengeance of our God, and, it says here, to comfort all that mourn. Our God is a God of great comfort also. And this is what was written in Isaiah. Now let's go to Luke chapter 4 in the Gospels. The Gospel goes Matthew, Mark, and then Luke. Luke chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 16. And we're going to see here that Jesus Christ is going to read these records that we just read from Isaiah. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, it says, and he came to Nazareth. This is talking about Jesus Christ. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue and on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read. Jesus Christ is now going to read the scriptures. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is the book of Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Jesus Christ must have known how the Bible worked, how the scriptures worked. They gave him the, the, the book of Isaiah, and he found the place that he wanted to read. And he's actually going to read what we read in Isaiah. And in verse 18 it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. One of the things that Jesus Christ came to do was to break the bondage, to set us at liberty, to bring God's deliverance to mankind. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. What a wonderful Lord and Savior he was. And in verse 20 he says, And he closed the book, and he, and he gave it again unto the minister, and he sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day the word of God is going to be fulfilled in your ears. Jesus Christ was ready to start his earthly ministry. 
He was ready to break the bondage, to set at liberty, to bring God's deliverance to people. And he says, it was in the scriptures. This scripture is now coming to be. It is now fulfilled in your ears. Go to, we're here in Luke chapter 4. Let's go to verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. And this is Jesus Christ being in the wilderness and being tempted by the adversary, being tempted by the devil. And Jesus, in verse 1, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit until the wilderness, and being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days did eat nothing. And when they were ended, and afterwards he hungered, and I imagine we all would be hungry after forty days with nothing to eat. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, and it's written in the Scriptures. Jesus Christ handled the adversary with the Word of God. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Isn't that just wonderful? You know, we all know that we need food. We need physical food. Without food, eventually we would die. So we need that food. But as much as we might need that physical food, we need the, the bread of life, the Word of God, the Scriptures, which is profitable to us. And Jesus Christ handled the adversary by saying, It is written. It's in the Scriptures. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not a word here, there, or yonder, but every word. Remember, all scripture is profitable. Here, Jesus Christ says, but by every word of God. Verse 5, And the devil taketh him up unto a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Here's all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. See, the adversary, all he wants was Jesus Christ to worship him, and he'd give him all the power of the world. That's what it says. Verse 8, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Man, what a Bible, what a scripture. Jesus Christ says, Satan, get behind me, get away, back off, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Verse 9 says, And they brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, he's always jabbing him, if you be the Son of God, if you be the Son of God. Well, he was the Son of God. Cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Where does it say that? In the scripture. Here the adversary goes, Oh yeah, it's written here, but he misuses that word of God. He misinterprets it. He uses it wrongly, and he tries to use it against our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ knew the scriptures. Jesus Christ knew that word of God, that Bible. And he said, Oh, it's, it's, it's said... Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. He couldn't handle Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ kept hammering him with the word. You know, in our lives, we can speak God's word and the adversary has to back off us also. That's why we just keep speaking that wonderful word of God because it's powerful for us. It has great things for us in our day and time and in our lives. Just wonderful things. Go to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. We're in the Bible here. Go to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. 
We're in Luke. It goes Luke. And then the very next book is John, chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 16 and 17. And in verse 16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We might be saved if we believe in what Jesus Christ accomplished for us. God loved the world. He so loved the world that he sent the Savior. He sent the Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants to break the bondages. God wants to set us at liberty. God wants us to be delivered from everything that holds us back from being our best. God wants to do that. Go to John chapter 8. We're in John. Just go to chapter 8 and we'll read verse 31. John 8 and in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Jesus Christ was testifying, witnessing, telling them who he was. And he said to those that believed on him, he says, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. As you know God's word, you'll be made free. Now it doesn't say set free. Because if I set you free, if someone would set you free, they could actually capture you and bring you back. And the truth shall make you free. Man, to be free. You'll just be free. Look at verse 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. We can be free people. Free in mind and body and soul. Just free people. Psalms. In the middle of the Bible, we'll go to Psalms 103, and we'll go to verse 10. Psalms 103, and in verse 10, and let's read it. It says, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him or respect him, or love him. God wants the respect and love from us. So great is his mercy towards them that respect him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, our shortcomings from us. As far as the east is from the west. You know, if you was to look at a globe, and you was the head east, you would never end up west. You know what I mean? You'd never be heading west. If you were to go uh, west, you'd go around the globe and always be going west. But if you were look at a globe again, and you were to head south, you'd be going south, 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 south. And then there's a place where then all of a sudden you'd be heading north. See that? There is a place where the north and south meet, but the east and west never meet. Wherever you're standing and you're on the globe, one way is west, one way is east. They never meet. And look at God's word here in verse 12. It says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth, and that word pitieth is the word love. Like as a father loveth his children, so the Lord pitieth or love them that fear or have respect for him. For he remembereth our frame, he remembers that we're dust. For as man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Upon them that fear or respect him who have love and awe for God and his righteousness unto his children's children. That's what's available for us. For those who love God, that's the starting place. We start by loving God. And then we have love and respect for the scriptures that make known God, 
to the Word of God. And then we have a desire to know God, and as we have that desire to know God, we can start to search and read the Scriptures, which is profitable for our lives, that we may have tremendous profit in our lives. I like to close with this thought. It's not important what my opinion is. My opinion doesn't matter. But what does matter is what does the Word say? What does that wonderful Word of God? In this class, you are going to learn how to research and search the Scriptures to see what God's Word says as you read it. And you'll be able to search the Scriptures to see if it's true what people are saying and you'll be able to understand God's word for yourself and to be able to tap into the resources for the more abundant life to be able to break the bondages in your life to be set at liberty to have God's deliverance God wants you to have life and to have it abundantly to live victoriously to have life in a great and wonderful and powerful way and it's available as you search the scriptures daily to see what's available that's why this class we're going to learn how to read our bibles our word of god our scripture for understanding and power as you go through this podcast class you will learn how to tap into the resources for the more abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available. You will be more and more powerful as time goes on. You will be able to live the life you've always wanted. To help you understand the scriptures and to learn the important scriptures for your life, I would like for you as we go through this class that you use your Bibles as we go through different scriptures throughout the class. Working with your own Bible will make the Bible a working, living, and vibrant part of your life as you learn how to read the Bible for understanding and power. You can use any Bible you would like to use as we go through the class. You can use a regular book Bible or an electronic Bible to learn how to find important scriptures as you go back and forth in your Bible. It will be important for you to learn how to make your Bible your friend, your daily resource for power in your life as you carry the thoughts of God's Word in your mind throughout your days. Something that has helped people is they have learned the books of the Bible in the order they're written in. They have taken the table of contents, learned the names of the Bible books in the order they are in in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Another thing that I have seen some people do is make notes from the syllabus that's in the show notes. They either use the page number or some other flagging method to find the verse. Any way that you would like to make it easier for you to learn how your Bible works for you. It's a tool for the rest of your life. Until the next session, how about starting to read your Bibles or go over the show notes from the last session to get ready for the next session. In the next session, we will learn how we got our Bibles. Mm -hmm.